What's up, everybody? So this is the uh, second video in the series of um, developing like this uh, over-the-shoulder style software development that I'm doing. So I kind of uh, decided on a few things, learned a few things while I was uh, uploading this last one. I think I'm going to keep with this style of just kind of click record on OBS, kind of go through whatever I want to go through for the video and then upload it. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of rigorous like editing and that type of stuff. I'm probably just going to dump whatever I end up with. So... Uh, that being said, if you don't like monologuing, probably the wrong channel for you. Um, like I said, it's going to be kind of an over-the-shoulder style, and I, uh, let's see, OTSSD, over-the-shoulder software development. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if that sticks, but that's what I uh, put on the first video as I was making stuff up for this. Um, and then uh, the channel's called uh, Bits and Bytes Software. So I guess if you watching this, you already know that. Um, but I went ahead and made a new channel, Bits and Bytes Software, that's not on my own thing. Um, just kind of keep it separate. Uh, so yeah, so bits about software, like I say, second video in this series. So this video is going to be kind of figuring this out as I go. Um, this video is going to be feature development. So if you watch the last video, there's a playlist link somewhere. Uh, let's see. Okay. There's a playlist linked somewhere. Um, go watch that. There's a video before this that kind of gives an overview of what we're doing. Kind of brings you up to speed of what we're looking for, what I'm trying to, the problem I'm trying to solve with this, uh, piece of software I'm calling track it and uh, I may we'll see what I do with the naming and stuff like I say I think I said that in a prior video I don't really have a great name for it um, but yeah let's go ahead and deep dive into this kind of feature development um, kind of brainstorming session and I'm going to try to flesh out uh, some features and kind of what we're looking for so uh, yeah let's just get right into it so like I say if you watch the last video you kind of understand what we're trying to accomplish here what we're trying to solve um, so kind of the first feature is being able to track, I'm going to say track uh, items, uh, track items, uh, items, let's see, I'm trying to think through this, so like tracking items, so by tracking, tracking is probably not a great word, um, um, store uh, item information, and uh, item, store item information, store item uh, I don't probably not a great word. Store. It's like I said, it's going to be kind of a, I don't know if this could be great. We'll see if I can post this. I don't know. Store item information. So this is a kind of a uh, backstory here. Like I say, I'm monologuing while I'm trying to figure this out. So this is kind of, I don't normally do this a lot for my personal software projects. This is usually something I just kind of wing on the fly. And I don't really go through the process of like having set in stone features and breakouts and stuff like that uh, you may hear these things called requirements you may hear them called you know various other names but the idea is you write down a list of things that the software should be able to do and that way you're limiting scope so scope creep is a big thing in software uh, so scope creep uh, just to kind of define that since this is kind of over the shoulder style um, I don't know what everybody's uh, experience is that's watching this but We'll go ahead and define it and just kind of get all this stuff for, uh, out in the open, essentially. Um, so scope creep. So scope creep is typically your the arch nemesis of any software development. So scope is the, you know, the emphasis of work, the statement of work, the sal, the there's a handful of different things you call it, but anyway, some sort of limiting feature set, limiting requirements, limiting statement of work, limiting hours. There's somewhere in the contract or the you know, somewhere when you're building out this initial development for software, you specify what I'm trying to build. And so there's this thing called scope creep. And scope creep would be where that's expanding over time. So you have 10 features. Well, now there's 11. Now there's 12. Now there's 13. Now there's 15. Now there's 50. Now there's 100. Right? So that scope creep is is over the lifetime of the develop over the lifetime of development, you're going to increase the scope of your development. So all software has scope creep. Uh, you just try to limit it in a sense of what you're delivering. So in the set of deliverables, or, you know, so let's say you're shipping software once a week, right? Or maybe, you know, this could be anything, right? Once a week, once a month, once a year, whatever. Whenever you ship software, there should be some sort of limited scope in that software that you're bundling up to, to release. And scope creep would be adding more and more to that release, right? So we all know software requirements change over time. You get more features. Software gets it, you know, bigger and bigger and bigger over time. So it's going to get bigger. Your scope's going to get bigger over time of the actual piece of software. Um, but your your scope for the release should not get bigger if you can help it, 
right? So there's always the occasional bug fixes, that type of stuff that will scope creep in, in the sense of you will have to deal with them. Um, you know, any issues that are going on with the software, those will creep in. Um, but ideally, your major milestones, your major, your big rocks, essentially, not your small rocks, your big rocks are set in stone. And if they move, then there has to be, you know, everybody in the project has to agree on the fact that we're moving these, we're changing the scope significantly. Um, so like I said, that's kind of what I want to do. So in this, uh, right, what I'm trying to do right now is uh, break this down, get the sort of high level features written down in the sense of things I'm trying to accomplish with the software. It's just kind of a mental exercise, more or less, you know, typical software development. You may do this once, you may never look at it ever again. You may never do this uh, just because you don't need to, but it's more of a mental exercise to kind of get it written down on a piece of paper to be able to think through um, what's going on, think through how this stuff's set up, think through just any sort of interesting problems that may arise, stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, we'll keep going now that we've gone down that model log. Um, and go in there. Anyway, try getting down that model log. Um, yeah, so storing out information. That's going to be the idea behind that feature is I have a phone, I have a hard drive, I have a computer monitor, I have a water heater, I have, you know, whatever we talked about in the first video uh, about things you could store, right? I want to store information about it. So this information is going to be uh, maybe model number, serial number. I'm just going to keep shorthanding this just because make it easy on me. Serial number. Um, maybe it's IMEI, uh, et cetera. Um, store, uh, purchase date. Actually, I'm going to say information. I'm going to break it out. So I did, I did these high level features plus breakouts. So I'm going to store out information as a high level and I'll break it out in the feature breakouts. So, um, let's see. Store out information. And then the next piece may be, so I want to do something around the fact that I am saving sub items. So like a house could have items inside it. So I'm going to put here, um, group items together, maybe. Um, so you could have a group as in, um, maybe, uh, groups could be, um, do examples here. So like uh, electronics, you could have a group of all your electronics. Uh, maybe you have a group of tools. Maybe you have a group of cars. So it'd be grouping items together would be kind of that like high level grouping. So you can group things like that. Um, but the other way to group items together would be um, sub items. Uh, allow items to have sub items. So the example here would be a house uh, contains water heater. Uh, let's see, a stove, a reef. Uh, I'm just gonna say fridge because I don't know how to spell refrigerator, um, etc. So that could be an example with the house uh, that I think I talked about different examples earlier in the last video. Um, anyway, there's a few different examples of where that could be useful. Um, tagging items could be useful. So instead of uh, grouping them by electronics or tools or cars, etc., maybe you just tag them. And so you could tag them with a, like, a, um, I guess you'd have a similar thing, right? Grouping and tagging would be probably very similar. Um, the difference would be, I'm just going to put the difference here. And it's between groups and tags is that items can only be in one group but can have multiple tags so like say this is, this is kind of an overview or uh, over the shoulder style thing um the idea behind you don't have to go super crazy in depth of you know, making sure everything sounds great, making sure you, you, you know, grammar is good. You know, don't worry about anything around the features you're putting down as long as they convey what you're trying to do, right? So this is not a super great tagging item. It's like not a super great feature, um, but in this, as long as you can understand the thought process behind what you wrote down, um, then that's important, right? So grouping items together. So I kind of 
that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, tagging items is pretty self-explanatory, except I wanted to constitute the difference between a uh, group and a tag, right? So tagging and grouping is is very similar concept or very similar concepts. So in this case, tagging is going to work the same as grouping, uh, except there's the difference. So in this case, I just put down the difference. Um, so anyway, so the, don't get too caught up in what you're trying to write down. The bigger thing is to write it down and to have it documented. Uh, so saving, so items should be able to have um, pictures of things with them. And those pictures could go into a few different categories. So maybe um, we definitely want to store pictures tied to items. Items is probably not the correct word, but it works. Uh, we can define items later and it'll be good enough. Um, store pictures tied to items. So in this case, uh, uh, under maybe categories uh, and allow categorization. So example would be uh, receipt, warranty card. Um, maybe you have the so most, uh, I forget what it's called, but most uh, most uh, products, especially like you get into water heaters, uh, even cars have them, right? You have some sort of information, picture of, of information plate. Uh, I'm not sure that's what it's called, but I kind of get, like I said, this is more along the lines of, I understand what I'm where I'm going with this, doesn't matter exactly what the, worm is so that's the little you know square plate um that's usually you know if you receipt on a refrigerator or something it could be stamped or printed um but anyway it's a little square thing it's usually got the model number serial number uh data manufacturer that type of stuff um so there's that that kind of covers pictures and tying pictures to items uh maybe we want to store pdfs so store pdfs um in a similar fashion To picks uh, useful for manuals, users manuals, user manuals. I don't know if it's you. I don't know if it's plural or whatever. Anyway, I get a point. So anyway, so storing PDFs may be helpful. You know, right when we go download the PDF right now, I'll store it in here. Then I can go back later and reference the PDF for users manuals. Uh, Videos, I'm not sure videos would be super useful. Uh, I'm gonna put it down here just because no, I thought about it. Not. Um, I guess could be useful in a sense of if something was making a noise or something, something like that, you could pick a video of it and save it in here for historical matters. So I'm gonna put it in here, maybe useful to uh, document. Things such as weird noises or uh, maintenance done or are damage to an item. Um, I could see it where a video may be useful for item damage. Uh, if you're a landlord and you know a tenant messed up something, right? They messed up a door or something. Maybe you take pictures of it and you video it. Um, uh, tenants destroyed something. I don't know. Um, let's see, I think there's two. Um, I use parentheses a lot to like document side thoughts. Every time I put parentheses, it's usually a side thought. Uh, whatever I'm kind of doing some of this stuff. Uh, I think that's gonna be more or less good enough for now. So. MVP, actually, maybe I'll work this out. So as you're building out a new piece of software, and this is going to be something you always want to think through, um, MVP features. So MVP stands for Minimum Viable Product. Uh, minimum Viable Product. So this would be a breakdown of what is the minimum feature set you need to uh, develop in order to have a useful piece of software somebody could actually start using, right? So over time, as you build software, the more you build software, the more you're going to realize that you can't, you know, think of 
you you can't think of everything. You can't, uh, you know, there's going to be use cases that users want to use that that may influence how you build the software. Uh, there's going to be different things that people use more or less. Maybe this feature is used a lot, maybe this one's not. So being able to release something sooner rather than later will get you feedback sooner as to what users are looking for, uh, any sort of design changes that might be needed, any sort of major like, hey, you thought something would work one way, but then users don't, that's not how users use it. Um, so MVP is important. Usually what you'll do is you'll take, you know, right, so you'll brainstorm uh, these high level features of like, hey, what all are we going to have included um, in the software? You know, what is all the ideas, all the, you know, everything surrounding this. And this is probably something over time as you come up with uh, ideas and not necessarily limited to software, but as you come up with ideas, you want to start documenting the different ideas you have of different features and different things, different use cases even. So uh, not just features, but you could also do use cases um, that you could document. So in this case, I want to use this for this. I want to use this for this. So my features are kind of use cases to a certain, I don't know, it's kind of mish Um I'm not a super strict person on a lot of this stuff. I think uh, action is better than uh, talking about it. So what gets me to action quicker is better for me. Um, maybe you're more uh, oriented towards making sure, you know, everything's lined out, looks good. Um, I'm more of a pragmatic person. I guess pragmatic and dogmatic would be the two different uh, theories uh, that you could, you know, go follow between. Um, but anyway, so uh, yeah, so um, I'm more pragmatic. Get something done, get it out, get it shipped. Um, so anyway, so that's kind of how it is there. But anyway, so you'll, you'll document, you'll come up with all these things. And then at some point in time, you got to figure out what the MVP is going to be, what the minimum viable product is going to be, right? So um, out of information, I'm just going to copy these down. There's probably a better way to do this, but I'm just going to copy it down. Um, so I, of course, information is useful. Um, sub items, I think is uh, super useful. So I think that may tie into grouping. So grouping and some items may end up being the same thing. Um, Actually, I'm going to go and call them the same thing. Um, and the development side, I'm probably going to assume that these are the same as far as development goes. So there's certain assumptions you can make when you're building out stuff. And this is kind of useful why it's written it down, writing it down is useful. So in this case, allow items to have sub items. Um, and I'm kind of thinking through this in my head of how I could implement that in software. And then it may be the same as a group. So a group may be the exact same as an item. So a group and an item may not have any actual difference uh, because maybe you have a group and you could even, you know, maybe it's just a really basic uh, item. Uh, so as I'm thinking through some of this, right, maybe you have item types. So item types, maybe you have equipment, uh, maybe you have phones, maybe you have computers, maybe you have uh, groups is one of your item types. And so that could have different things depending on what you're looking for, right? Because model number and serial number is probably uh, super like normal. Everything's going to have it. IMEI number, on the other hand, is probably going to be not going to be on most devices. It's going to be on maybe tablets, uh, some computers that have built-in modems, uh, phones, that type of stuff. You're going to limit yourself there. Um, so maybe you have different... Uh, Item types, um, maybe that'd be the right word, but as I'm thinking through this, so maybe a group could just be one of your item types. And so then a group, then sub items are just going to go into items. And so I can say, maybe that's how that's implemented. So those could actually be the same thing. I'm going to leave them separate, but that's kind of my theory right now. Uh, those could be separate and those could be different. Um, I do think pictures are super important right now. I don't think uh, anything else is going to be super important. I think that's the main three things that I've got written down here. Uh, PDFs um, is probably going to be really similar to pictures, so and maybe even videos. So over time, as I'm building this, I'm probably going to keep in mind that uh, in the future, we're going to do PDFs and videos uh, so I can write the code kind of in that way. And so there'll be certain things, I certain decisions I make there. But... I don't think I'm, I think pictures are the most important for the MVP. So this is kind of what I got right now for MVP. So I want to store item information. I want to allow items to have sub items. And then I want to store pictures uh, tied to those items. So yeah, that's kind of my basic MVP right now. I'm trying to think of anything else that might be helpful. I think that's it. Um, I may go back and reference this over time as I add more to it. Uh, we'll just kind of see how some of this fleshes out. 
um, feature breakouts. So this is kind of my next thing. So as you get these high level features, you want to go deep down and say, okay, well now let's break that out. You know, what does this actually mean, right? So storing out information would probably be our first thing. And now what is, uh, in this case, it's going to be uh, different examples of what we can store. So, um, uh, what what we can store. So I'm gonna go really basic right now. Model number, serial number. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe you have model and model number, right? Because model can be different than model number. Uh, purchase date. Um, sale date, maybe? If you wanna keep track historically, if you sold something. Um, I think that's going to be some basic stuff. Maybe a description. I don't know. I kind of hate having just blank. I feel like every time you build anything software wise, you always have a description field. Um, I kind of not a huge fan of having description field just because like they're super generic and vague and I don't know, but it does open up a lot of your use cases if you put a, just a generic description field, um, into things. So I'm going to go, uh, how do I do, can I do that? Um, let me see if I can do, I'm not a, a car specific. I'm not a super like crazy uh, uh, markdown person. I right, rendered the same, maybe star space star. Eh, that'll work. Um, so car specific, maybe a VIN number. Uh, year model. <laughs> sure. Um, trim, right? Trim will be important on a car. Um, I may look up after this video how to actually do this bulleting. Um, but, uh, trim. This works good enough. <laughs> What else would be on a car? Um, maybe you could have color be a generic one. All right, so color, I don't know if that would be generic. I'm gonna put generic here, question mark, I'm not real sure. Uh, I'm gonna do that there. Uh, maybe we have, uh, electronic specific things, specific things, so. Electron specific, maybe an IMEI number. Um, maybe you have a <laughs> oh, IMEI number is my current idea behind that. Um, that's I think it's gonna be good enough for that. This kind of gives me a basic. So, um, especially since we're talking about MVP here, you don't have to get everything down. This is kind of where I feel like some people get caught up, and I. I could get caught up in it if I don't watch myself. But uh, since we're doing minimal viable product, you don't have to get all fields set up in here. And we could even like, cause thinking through this, like this is just a good idea of like starting points for uh, when I start development. Um, I know I'm gonna have multiple more, I'm gonna have a ton more fields than all of this stuff I've got right now. So I'm just gonna build it in a way of, of in the future, I can build out more fields and not have to make huge modifications to the code base, right? Maybe even I make it uh, pretty dynamic, right? So maybe users can add their own fields. So, and maybe you could even make your own templates. So I was talking above about how you might have different templates, maybe an electronic template, maybe, a, so this is where I was getting to down here. Maybe there's car specific things, electronic specific things, um, stuff like that. Maybe there's house specific things, right? So house specific may be interesting. Um, cause you could have a uh, roof, uh, replacement date, uh, last roof replacement. I don't know. Uh, date, uh, maybe you have, um, uh, year built. Maybe you have, uh, square feet. Uh, let's see, rooms, right? So bed slash bath. Uh, so you're gonna have that, and you know, maybe even uh, 
Uh, office. Uh, <laughs> study. I don't know. Just other rooms you could have in your house. And then maybe that's another level of grouping you could do. I don't know that I would get super in depth, but if you're trying to do stuff for like insurance purposes, maybe that's useful. And this would be where MVP would come into play is, you know, maybe a use case would be is you uh, assign things to rooms, right? So maybe you have this TV in the living room and maybe you have this TV in your bedroom. Maybe you have this TV, you know, this computer in your office. Uh, maybe an interesting thing. Uh, I think that would be a little far down a rabbit hole for me, um, but I could see it being useful in a sense of just somebody may want to use it for that use case. And this is an example of something I just came up with when I was talking through this. Um, and so I'm going to go up here. Um, should I'm going to put this houses be able to assign things to rooms. I'm just going to document that just to say that I had the thought. Um, yeah, we'll go from there. So I think it's going to be good enough for now. So that should be giving me an example of a few different things. Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and document some of the stuff here of like um, ideas. So um, storing out information, but like uh, templates. So these items should be somewhat template based. Uh, so that we can, so that can easily build uh, more templates or easily build more templates. Yeah, templates and maybe even have user definable templates. So let's say you're a landlord and you really like having, I don't know, some weird field in your house. You could make a custom house template. Um, and then you would always use that as your base uh, when you're building this out. Um, address would be a house thing. I didn't think about address a second ago, but there you go. Address would be super helpful. Use your final templates. Um, allowing users to add custom fields. Uh, would be useful. Uh, that way, when you render your fields, right, they can have your custom ones. This is going to be, may not make it into MVP. Um, so this would be, you know, like I said, that weird, you know, maybe... Uh, there's some sort of ID, ID number that a landlord has to tie to a house. And so that ID number could be a custom field. They could say, you know, our, uh, you know, our ID number or ID number or something as a custom field, and they could implement that. Uh, that may not make it in then to the MVP just due to the fact that that requires a lot of moving parts uh, to make custom fields like that. There's not, I haven't seen a ton of great ways to do stuff like that um, without just going nuts of like, get a super weird stuff because uh, like rendering the page becomes a lot more complicated because you don't know how many fields you're going to have that type of stuff so uh we'll see what uh what that comes up with uh you know it may just be limiting custom fields maybe you, you can specify a field type right maybe you could have a date time maybe you could have a string um, but you may not be able to go super crazy with some of that type of stuff uh may just be a matter of limiting the custom fields so there's rendering the page is uh, still straightforward but um, anyway, so yeah, so that's just kind of that. Um, yeah, so next I'm going to go to the second thing. Another cool part about this, let's see if I scroll up. Um, yeah, and when you render markdown, 135 goes into 123 for some reason. Uh, I don't like, I don't know, it is what it is. Um, I know over here it's 135 because it ties back to 1, 3, and 5 up there. Uh, this is 3, and this is sub items. I don't know that I'm going to have a lot to break out here. I'm probably just going to break out the idea. The idea behind this is to 
be able to store items with an item. Um, best example would be a house with things like water heaters, um, stove, etc. Um, and each of those would be their own items so that uh, models, so that all, uh, all information can be stored um, on that item. So this would be model, serial, uh, dates, etc. So the idea behind that would be that uh, all these items are the same thing. One thing I do want to come up here and add to the features I just thought of. So um, as you go through this, you're going to come up with more things, right? So uh, maintenance records. Um, and this is this may not be maintenance records specifically, uh, but historical documentation um, for when something was changed, maybe or replaced. Um, so, example change example would be. Oil change at you know x x x x x y z miles x x x miles. Um, I think that's how you do numbers. Um, maybe you do do what else would you do? Uh, um, <laughs> I don't know. Just leave that as an example. Um, <laughs> um, now I'm going to be document uh, consumables. So a piece of this may be, uh, maybe you want to keep track of model numbers. I think I put this on my original monologue, but keep track of model numbers of like oil filters. Um, oil filter model number. Uh, oil type. Um... Maybe you have uh, run AC uh, blower motor model number. Um, and maybe even you document, uh, could even document uh, links to websites or stores that the item can be purchased from. Um, so that's going to be helpful. Basically, it's uh, just to reference anything that you want to be able to pull up easily, right? So you go to the auto parts store and you need your oil filter number and your what oil, engine oil you want to use. So right, you just, okay, I'm going to pull up my car. Okay, cool. Well, there's, there's the oil filter. There's the oil type I'm using, that type of stuff. So I think that's super helpful. I am going to put maintenance records on the MVP, actually. I think that's going to be a useful thing to document there. Uh, I think it's going to be useful, uh, having maintenance records in MVP. Um, so what was next? Uh, five will be pictures. I'm going to do this, make it easier on me. I don't know that I need to break this out much more, um, but I am going to just do a little bit of documentation here. Um, this would be used for things like receipt, pictures, warranty cards, uh, item formation plates, uh, etc. These be be categorized. If I could spell. Um, categorized um, in categories like receipts, um, uh, warranty info. See, um, probably want custom categories. Um, um, <laughs> Yeah, I probably want some custom categories because, like, you're not going to 
have every category, you're not going to be able to figure out every category. So some sort of custom categories would be useful, as in a user could define their own categories. Um, one thing I'm thinking about here too is receipts should have a date time. Maybe you even have like amounts. Um, one thing to consider is uh, receipts could have more information. So you could document. Uh, like the purchase amount, right? So purchase amount, uh, date of purchase, etc. Um, this be useful uh, reporting. Um, so maintenance costs. So, good example thing to hear is one thing like receipts could have um, amounts tied to them, data purchase, uh, maybe even other things, uh, store, maybe do a store, uh, maybe even do like some sort of ID number, so like tax ID number, right? Um, depending on what you need for taxes. Um, yeah, so this could be useful. Maybe you would have like a category. Um, uh, whenever you're documenting for uh, like an accountant to come back and use it, maybe you have an accounting category. Um, so this would be, you know, maybe like uh, maintenance or not an accountant, but maybe you do like replacement cost. Um, mm -hmm. description could be useful or some sort of memo, a memo uh, could be useful. So you could document like, hey, I replaced this. Hey, this is why this I bought this type of stuff, um, especially if you're going to look at reporting purposes. So, you know, hey, over the last year, I want to know how much I spent on this thing. That could be really useful whenever you get into like fleets of trucks or uh, housing, right? So housing, you could keep track of these receipts. Um, keep track of the all the costs and everything and run reports at the end of the year to know how much money you spent, um, that type of stuff. So that's useful. Um, maybe if you could tie items to a receipt. Um, <laughs> I don't know that I like that one. So the idea would be if maybe you could tie an item to a receipt. So maybe inside your house you have a water heater. You tie the receipt to the house, um, but you could also tie it to the water heater. Um could be useful. So, your idea. Well, I'm just gonna make another paragraph here. Being able to tie receipts to multiple items. Uh, for example, um, tie the receipt to a house and tie it to a water heater. Um, may not be useful. I'm thinking through this, uh, may not be required. Um, because a report could be pulled to include all sub item receipts. So maybe instead of tying it to multiple places, maybe you just do the fact it's in a sub item. Um, uh, then you could use them do groupings and stuff, right? So your groupings, you wouldn't have to tie it to a group and the item, you just tie it to the item. And then inside of your group, you could do a report of like all electronics or all cars or all whatever. Um, and then even on that accounting category, right, you could do a subgrouping like uh, cars. I want to go on all my group of all my cars, um, but I also want to do maintenance only or something, right? Uh, or replacement cost only or uh, stuff like that um, that you could define. So I'm going to go ahead and say that's not required. Um, I'm just going to say not required here. Uh, but I'm going to leave this because sometimes it's useful to go back and say, hey, um, you know, this is why we came to this decision or like we already thought through this process, that type of stuff. Uh, this video is getting pretty long, so I'm probably going to go through maintenance reports really quickly. And then you get the idea if you stuck with me this long. Hey, hope you like it. I hope you like the content. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to go through this one really quickly. 
and then sign the video off here just because we're it's already a pretty long video <laughs> Um, so yeah, maintenance records. So the idea behind this would be to store over time. You would keep uh, track of what happens to an item. Um, so this would be somewhat like comment style. So if you've seen comments on forums or comments on like uh, like Jira software comments, that type of stuff. So it would be a documented. So you'd have a documented date and time um, along with a memo or description of what happened um, and probably will probably want to be able to type pictures uh, here and maybe this is kind of why I want to think through this is a MVP thing maybe this is the only way to type pictures maybe every picture um, would have to be a sub item and so maybe everything's just done that way and then you have more of a, a history timeline, essentially, and not just uh, here's a page of pictures and here's a page of, of different records. So maybe this is records in general. Um, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and make this modification. So actually... Pictures will be tied using records. Just want to put that there. So I think that's what I want to do. So pictures will be tied using records. Uh, so this will be used to also use to tie pictures. Um, and that's... Uh, Number five. I'm just going to put number five here just to say that that references that. Uh, uh, that feature or whatever, right? So, so I'm just going to go and make that distinction there as. And then maybe we'll need the memo item here. Um, but that's going to be how we type pictures is you have to attach them on a comment or attach them on a record or something, right? So. Um, cool. I think that kind of gets a uh, starting point for breaking it down. Um, if you stayed this long, then I hope you liked it. I hope it was useful to think through my thought process and kind of be alongside of me as I'm working through some of this. If you didn't like it, then I don't know why you stuck around this long. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm going to sign off here. I don't know if I'm going to do empty relation diagrams. I may go ahead and do a short, I say short, none of my videos are going to be short. Um, but do an NT relational diagram for some of these database items. I think that's probably my next video. Uh, it may not be out today, but um, you're probably not watching this today anyway. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to cut us off there. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you like this content. Uh, if there's anything specific you want to see uh, in this series of how some of this stuff flows together and how this development works, then feel free to let me know. Mm -hmm. Subscribe. Um, so bits and bytes software, I think is what I'm calling this. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, appreciate the watch. Like I say, uh, let me know if there's anything specific you want to see. And then I can kind of go from there. All right. Catch y'all later.